Hello my fellow crafters and welcome back to Inspiration for Cards. Today I'm not going to make a card but I'm going to be working in my planner. Um, that is, there was just a new launch which is called the Planner Essentials Planner Stencils. Now try that, say, try saying that 10 times in a row. Took me some practice to get out of my mouth but uh, the stencils are fantastic. And uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use them to make my May dashboard. And I just thought, let's kill three birds in one stone. So I'm going to make my monthly blog that I'm doing for Elizabeth Craft Designs. I'm going to use a lot of stencils from the new set. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, what was the third thing? And I'm going to do the challenge that is in the Elizabeth Craft Designs Facebook group, uh, the ECD Planners and Journaling. Um, that is, every month we get a prompt. And the prompt for this month is to use your two favorite colors. So I'm going to combine all these three. So I'm going to, this is going to be on my blog or on the Elizabeth Craft Science blog, I should say. Uh, I'm going to use the new stencils and it's my monthly challenge all in one go. So without any further ado, let's dive in and uh, have a look at what we're going to be playing with. Because that is quite fun. And the star of the show is going to be this uh, stencil set. Now there are two sets in this collection. I'm going to be playing with Planner Stencils 2. So this is the Planner Essentials Planner Stencils. They've just been released um, and yeah, I'm, I'm loving them. So I will get through them in a minute. Further, I'm going to be using this stamp set. It's called Months from the Planner Essentials collection. I'm going to use the Planner Essentials 38 and I'm just going to use this die from the birds. I'm going to use the Planner Month for, to cut out May and my base page is Planner Essentials 2. So with that being said, um, I'm going to show you what colors I'm going to use because the challenge is your two favorite colors. And that is these two. I'm in love with this, these two colors, Salvage Patina and Vintage Photo. And especially the combination of these two. The combination of these two, I think is a match made in heaven, really. Um, so that's that. I'm also going to be using this, or I have used, to be honest, uh, I will explain in a second. The Vintage Legend Antique Gesso from Cadence. Beautiful stuff, nice stru structure, but I've already prepared my pages with that because this takes time to dry. So here are my prepared pages, just normal um, mixed media paper that I have covered in this, oops, that I've covered in this gesso. So that's what I'm gonna be using and I have cut out my birds. Those are gonna be on the page and the word May is gonna be right there. Now, this is already pretty, two colors, black and white, but I'm gonna do a bit more to it. Um, but yeah, this is the idea. So I'm gonna put these away and we're gonna start with the stencils. Now, in this pack, you get six planner stencils. Those are the ones that are in this set good thing about these planner stencils is they've got holes in it so you can line them up on the holes and then use them on your page uh, and you get a full planner page so that is really really nice um, but you can also shift them slightly line them up at the side here and then you cover the whole page including the holes so you get choices that's what I like what I also like about these holes is that you can store them in your planner if you have a spare planner or an old planner you don't use anymore stick them in there and store them like that, which is also quite convenient because between the two sets, you get 12 stencils. So uh, I'm gonna use five. I'm not gonna use the honey grain. Um, so I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna put that onto my paper, which, which is a bit warped, but we'll make it work. Uh, and I'm gonna start with my big boy brush and a vintage photo. So I'm going to load up my brush. With a good layer. And I'm going to start in this corner, just putting on that color onto my paper. Pressing down the page, the stencil onto the page. And just randomly putting color on there. So I'm not covering the whole page with one design. I'm gonna switch designs in between, but I do want 
good layer of this on there. There we go. That's the first one done. Just quickly gonna crunch up that tap that was annoying me. Then I'm gonna take the next one. I'm just gonna put that on there again, get my vintage photo loaded onto my brush, press these down, and do the same thing. And I'm gonna overlap because this whole technique is a layering, stencil layering technique. So I'm just gonna cover this up like so. Tiny bit more down here. It's getting less intense in some areas, but that's not important. Next, I'm coming in with this one. I'm gonna put that on. Now this stencil is a bit more tricky because it's really grabbing onto the texture underneath. So I need to press quite hard to get the ink to go through the little holes, but that's only because this paper has this structure. Look at that. And yeah, you will lose some of the stones that are in there, but that's not important. But look, you've got a nice, this is already fun, but we're gonna do a bit more. I've got one more stencil that I'm gonna put on here. This one I'm gonna save for the end. I'm just gonna, in some areas again, put this over. It's a fun technique, this, because it really layers these stencils over top of each other. Gives it a fun look. You will see in a minute. See? It's really creating depth and layered look. Right, next. I'm going to tap off the excess that come, came loose. I'm going to close up Vintage Photo and I'm going to get Selfridge Patina. Selfridge Patina, love it. I'm going to load up my brush and come back to the stencils. So I'm going to put this one on again and in some areas I'm going to put this over the vintage photo that's already on there. Like so. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking at where are the lightest areas. I'm putting it over there. Like here, you see a light area. Just putting that vintage photo down there. And fine. finally, a little bit over here. Now what you see now is that the vintage photo and um, selfish patina are mixing a bit on my brush and on the stencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my piece paper and I'm going to rub my brush over that until I can see, see now I've got clear vintage photo and I'm going to load up my brush again. Now I can see a big white spot over here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put my stencil on here. Just put that on there. So it's very simple. No rocket science, it's a really fun technique. You create really fun layers with it. See? And that's the beauty of the uh, oxides because they are opaque. They are a mixture between dye ink and pigment ink. Um, and that causes them so you can layer them. And that is really fun.
I think that's enough. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this stencil. It's a beauty. I'm just going to clean off my brush again. Load it up again with salvage patina. And then I'm going to take this center bit and fill that in. Just over the top of all the other ones. There we go. Love that. So I'm going to leave this to dry for a second while I continue working on this one. Now, I'm just going to take this stencil since I've got it on top. And where I started with the vintage photo underneath here, I'm going to start with my selfish patina on this circle. This circle is going to be the centerpiece on my page. It will have the month on it. This is already fun. Look at it. I love it. And I think this one is fun to put on there. So load up that brush again. And this is no rhyme or reason. I'm just layering these stencils up, creating different structures and different layers of these colors. So that's that. Then I'm going to come in with my other stencil and my vintage photo. And I'm going to layer that on top of each other. And this will have a different look because of the different order I've layered the stencils or the color in. And last one. like so. You see what I mean? It's a different order and that really comes together nicely. So that was the blending done, or at least putting on the colors. Because next what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly dry this a bit. And then I'm going to come in with what's left on my brush and very lightly go over the whole design. Just to take away that stark white background, making it a bit more grungy like that. And I'll do the same with the salvage patina. Just going over the whole page. Some areas will fade out more than others, but that's completely fine. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to spray this with water so it can oxidize a bit. Just enough so the color starts to bleed. That's what I want. And then I'm going to dry this. Now that will take a while, so I will edit that footage out. But for now, uh, I'm going to make some noise, but you will not hear it. Okay, this is now nice and dry. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come in with my frayed burlap. I'm just going to grunge up the edges of the page and of the circle. Just to grunge it up ever so slightly. Um, I don't like the white edges. I'm actually going to come in with some black as well in a minute to really darken up the edges. And by doing that on this circle, it will really make it stand out. 
it's already popping off there. But once I've done it with the black, you will see what I mean. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Edges slightly darker, or the corners, I mean. But I don't like this white look on the edge. So I'm just coming over that with vintage, but well, not vintage photo, freight burlap to bring in another color. Don't tell anyone because it's just the edges. Nobody will notice. If you don't tell, I won't tell either. Because the focus of the page is still the two colors. And black is not a color, right? So next I'm coming in with black, black shoot, which is not a color. <laughs> and freight burlap is uh, the same color family as vintage photo. At least that's going to be my excuse. But by putting the shadow, sort of a shadow layer you create, by edging this with black, look, it really pops off the page. I'm going to do the same with the whole page, just to give this edge slightly more grungy, dark look. There we go. And now we can already assemble our page. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to put the word May on there. Now, I was laughing the other day because um, I heard somebody say, um, I can't remember who it was. It was a lady on YouTube saying, oh, I always struggle to put um, words on a circle straight. And I was laughing because I had the same until I realized a circle is round. It's always straight. You just turn it a bit. But in this case, I want to get it on straight because I don't know if you can see, but there are lines in there from the brush, brush strokes. And that's in here as well. And I want the brush strokes to have the same direction. So what I'm doing is putting it down. It is like that. And I've cut these out with the double sided adhesive on the back, but I do want to put some glue on because of the structure that is on the page. Um, it otherwise will struggle to adhere to it. So I'm just going to take my May word, let go of me. And I will try to put that on as straight as possible. <laughs> ah, I had so much fun when I heard her say that because I had the exact same realization. Now I just have to really press this into all the nuts and crannies that are on there. So that will really stay down there. There, that's on there, May. So I'm gonna put this on here just to help it stay down. Then I'm gonna take the double-sided adhesive from this bird, or these birds, I should say, birds on a branch. Love this one. It's cute. Why birds, you say? Well, because May is the month that all the birds are nesting and laying eggs. So that's what I was thinking, like, okay. That could be on there. Because otherwise it would have been a very blank page and yeah, I wanted some, something special on there. And I think the birds are fine. Now I want to do that on a diagonal. So I'm just going to put that here. That's the benefit of having a bit of glue underneath as well, because that will definitely give me some wiggle time. There we go. And I will have to do the same with this. Just press it down firmly because of all this structure on the page. Otherwise it will not adhere to the page. Okay, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this circle right here. Um, and I'm contemplating with myself, I do want to put this up slightly. So I'm going to take my foam tape. I've got some here. Where's my scissors? I'm just going to put some foam tape on there. 
one, it'll give it some dimension, and two, it will help me uh, adhering it on that structure because the foam tape is flexible. So if I press that down, it will go around the stones because there are really stones in here. Look. Okay, so I've also put some glue behind this because I really want to make sure this sticks to the page well. And I don't mind giving it some dimension in my planner. I like a bulky planner, so um, I use one planner per quarter. So yeah, my planner is going to be full anyway. So I don't mind. And now I'm going to press this down really firmly. That will help. Adhere everything down. There we go. Now, by all means, this could be done and dusted. But mm, it's not, because I'm going to do a tiny bit more. What I have here is a Distress Ink in Hickory Smoke, which is just a diluted black. So I'm still sticking to my two-color challenge. And I'm going to pick a tiny spray of water to make my brush wet, just dip it in. And what I'm going to do, I want to create a tiny bit of shadow underneath the birds here, under the branch. Not much, but it will just make these birds pop off the page a tiny bit more. See what I mean? Gives it some dimension. And I'm going to do the same around my circle. Just to enhance that shadow that is already there because I've Put it up a bit, but I still like to give it that shadow all around. See what I mean? It really gives it even more dimension. So, and here we have it, my May dashboard. It's finished. Um, I really like this. Look at that the structure and the, the different layers of the stencils. Uh, it's really fun. The birds are fun. So let's put this in my planner. If I can get it. Come on. And call it done. There we go. Nice in my planner. So here I have my April dashboard that I did for the last month. The challenge was circles. And this month it was two colors. So again, here we have our May dashboard. If you like this video, please consider to give it a thumbs up and consider to subscribe to my channel. That would really make my day. Um, and I really love making these videos for you. I do it out of passion and that support would really help me out. So thank you for that. Then I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you for the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.